All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television show in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing... Looking for Rachel Wallace, book number six in Robert B. Parker's Spencer Mystery Series set in Boston, Massachusetts. Let's talk about the cover first because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. The thing about this cover, I mean, there's nothing really that special about it. Um, it's got a book with a dagger or something stuck through it. Some blood uh, dripping from the pages. It's all right. But the thing I like about it is it kind of matches the set of Robert. I got all the Spencer novels down here. They are right down here. Right there they all are. Um, anyway, but they all look pretty de decent on the shelf. And when we're talking about mystery novels here, and so uh, I don't expect a whole lot from cover artwork. But anyway... Um, Book number six in his Spencer series, and there's probably 30-some-odd books in the series. We're reading and reviewing them all for the channel in order of publication. Let's talk about, um, came out 1980. Um, so it's an older book. Uh, Spencer, and what, here's the thing. This is one crazy thing, is uh, this book, thematically, is similar to the book that I reviewed yesterday, which was, um... I'll Be Watching You by Charles Dillon, another serial killer book. This is a, a mystery novel, and they both thematically have uh, are talking about issues of feminism, um, homosexuality, uh, misogyny, patriarchy, and just douchebag guys being douchebags, and uh, women trying to um, uh, you know triumph over that sort of dichotomy. Uh, I'm also, I, I think that I, this might be Charles DeLint's um, answer. So the first, if, if you know anything about the character Spencer, who's the investigator in these books, he's kind of like, um, he's clearly a jokester. He's a man's man kind of dude. Um, he's a testosterone-fueled kind of misogynist. Just every word out of his mouth is half flirtatious to every woman he meets. He just like the type of guy. And I think that maybe Robert Parker took some criticism, even in the 70s, where the first five books were set in the 70s. I mean, the guy was just kind of like rolling through life as like this unfiltered mouthpiece for um, douchebaggery. Funny, though funny, his lines are funny. Uh, you can tell that sensitive people today would not like this guy and probably sensitive people back then didn't like him either and i'm thinking this might this book might be robert b parker's answer to all the criticism that he took and his character spencer took for being the way that he was what happens in this book is spencer our investigator is hired to be the bodyguard of a gay a very famous gay feminist writer and she is a real boss babe she is a real boss babe from the jump. And I'm just thinking to myself, this is not going to work. They are going to clash so hard. Because if you know Spencer, he is not going to get along with a feminist boss babe. And um, she is going to hate every single thing about this guy. I mean, hate everything. She's every, I mean, Spencer is everything this woman's going to hate. Um... And when they meet, it turns out, for their first meeting, um, it turns out that she is as humorless as he expects her to be. Just has no sense of humor. All of his flirtatious, nonsensical lines are falling flat. She's rolling her eyes. She wants to fire him immediately. They don't get along at all. And um, she just i mean it's just a clash from the beginning you just see the disaster happening um but spencer can't help it he's a wise ass the more uncomfortable he she becomes the more he kind of pushes um she's an author uh she's got um she even in their first meeting there's just some great lines about the writing process, how agents work, about publishing and the business. She's really kind of in this contentious meeting that they have at the beginning. She's really sp spinning some good advice for writers, you know, and um, just in, in, in that. And then I wanted to read page 10 because 
she starts to question everything about Spencer. Um, and she's like, she's, she's kind of awoke. She's kind of woke. And she's like, I think she wants to hire a bodyguard that is as woke as her. And so she's kind of questioning Spencer because she can tell he's not. And so she says, I wish to get some insight into your attitude about women and women's issues. That's dumb, Spencer said. You ought to be getting insight into how well I can shoot, how hard I can hit, and how quick I can dodge. That's what somebody is giving me $200 a day to protect you. My attitude towards women is irrelevant. That's the way he is. He's like, do you want a bodyguard that's going to protect you or, uh, or just someone that's going to agree with all of your political opinions? That's kind of what he's getting at. And so she kind of like comes around at that point and she's like, okay, yeah, maybe I do need like, maybe I do need that Jack Nicholson character on the wall protecting me, even though I don't agree with every how he gets it done. I need it. And so as this book goes along this contentious relationship she starts to find out that spencer isn't the um douchebag that she thought he was it's just sort of like this way that he navigates the world the, the, his personality is sort of almost like it is his personality but it's also kind of like a put on just to keep people off guard and um some of the conversations spencer and this feminist lady get into are um very forward thinking for 1980 i mean it's actually really forward thinking for 1980 um i mean the gay and feminist issues that they discuss with each other there's an astute sensibility that um spencer the the investigator starts to show and they really start to develop a bond these two characters rachel and spencer they really start to develop a close close bond where they really start to respect each other and each other's opinions and start to see the world in slightly different ways and um and just when you think things are getting good she gets kidnapped Rachel gets kidnapped, and now Spencer has to go find her and rescue her. And that's sort of the plot of the second two-thirds of the book, is him trying to find out who kidnapped her and save her and all this. Very, very good. I actually thought this was my favorite Spencer novel to date, just because of the themes that were being discussed and how we got to see a different side of Spencer, how he's not this just brutish, smart-ass, Jack Reacher-like tough guy all the time that he actually can see the world um from a lot of different perspectives and uh i really liked how rachel really warmed to him and how he warmed to her and that the relationship just wasn't contentious the whole time anyway great book um sometimes these little mysteries can have some really profound things in them i give this a t 10 out of 10